Hey guys, it's Spitfire again. Today, I'm gonna show you how I go about making these Hornaday overall length uh, case gauges. This is one of my Wildcats that I made, and if you're not familiar with these, this is a, a tool you buy. You can buy them either bent like this. These are mainly for semi-autos or straight. Um, and this case is threaded on there. And then inside here, I'll take this off, there's a little rod that you can push back and forth. So what's the purpose of this? Well, for you non-reloaders out there, <clears throat> when you're reloading ammunition, you want to see how far you want to seat your bullet. So you put your bullet in there, and then you stick this guy in your chamber, and then you push your bullet in until it stops, and then you see uh, where your rifling begins. So that's what these guys are used for. What I got here is I got two 223 cases. They are once fired. And with my case gauges, I don't neck size them. <clears throat> I guess my theory is the whole purpose of doing a custom case like this is to blow your case out to your chamber dimensions. And nine, I don't know, 95 times out of 100, these cases will have enough neck tension to hold that bullet in there without moving around. I'm gonna try this one too. That one's even tighter yet, but see there's enough tension in there. Some guys neck size these to, you know, a certain size, and I guess my theory on that is you're not gonna be worrying about your neck. You know, your neck really has got nothing to do with it here. All you wanna do is <clears throat> hold this bullet um, enough so you can push it forward and, and the looser it is the better but you need it, enough tension on there to hold that guy in place so when you do push it you can actually feel the stop on the lands and then also if you size your neck you know sometimes you can you know it won't match up to your chamber and you'll get an out of round um, neck uh, guys with bushing dies will argue that with me but my theory is, if this floats just a little tiny bit, it'll self-center itself up on all your all your lands and your rifling. Um, if it's a static hold where you're really tight in your shoulder, and for some reason you got your shoulder off-center a little bit, and you got run out, then you might be stopping on this side of the lands, and your lands over here might not be touching. So that's my theory on why I don't neck size them. So let's get started. What you'll need to do this is a really nice sharp, uh, what is this, a 5 16 by 36 threads per inch tap. This is a four flute, works really good. And then a 9 30 seconds, a really nice sharp uh, drill bit. <clears throat> a couple things that I do, I don't, I've been kind of lazy the past year here and I was, haven't set up my reloading stuff so I made myself a little punch here for primers. And then this little guy, this is just a threaded for the same as this. So I'll show you what I do with that here in a second. So let's um, show you what I do here. All right. So before I chuck this guy up in my lathe, I usually, with tapered cases, um, I usually like to put some sort of centering thing on them. So all this is a piece of felt. You get it at like a craft store or something. Then I wrap a piece of tape around it, and then I put it right over, right below the shoulder. And then that way, that'll kind of help center that front of that, or the yeah the front side of that case up a little bit. <clears throat> if you're using like a a case with very little taper, then you don't have to worry about it. And it usually um, a few thousands taper. You can usually put a piece of tape or something around it, and it'll work out pretty good. So I usually try to clamp this guy as close as far back on the web here as I can. And then with these little 223 cases, you gotta be kind of careful. This is a 223, but you wanna snug them down fairly decent. <clears throat> so it doesn't slip. And then let's see, where is our bit? There we go. So when you do this, you wanna make sure um, your ways are nice and greased. Uh, this time, we don't have to worry about it, but I'm gonna lock my tail stock down here kind of a medium speed 
And then we're just going to crank in and drill that guy out. So like I said, on these little 223 cases, it's taken out a lot of material. I have to put my paper towel down, but we're good. Could probably speed this up a little bit, but it don't matter. So there we go. <clears throat> Drilled all the way through, so I'm just gonna loosen that guy up and pull it straight out. There we go. Now, take our drill bit out, grab our tap. This is, remember, this is the uh, 5 16 by 36. I'm just going to put that in there. And then <clears throat> you want your tailstock to move fairly freely, and I'm going to crank, crank in here. You want it to move fairly freely, but you don't want to move it up and down at all. So, so now I'm going to pop my back gear in because I want to be going as slow as, or not as slow as I can, but a little slower. And I got this guy probably running slower, way slower than we need to, but for this it'll work out great. So you can see this this guy moves out. Let's zoom out. This guy is just free floating here. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to lock my thing down. Make sure my bed is nice and oiled, and that guy's just gonna feed itself in. And if you got a nice sharp tap and four flutes, and this case is in there good, it should cut right through that brass without no big issue. Make sure your carriage is not in the way, otherwise that'll screw it up. Like I said, I could have sped her up just another speed here, but for demonstrations. Alright, I think that's plenty enough, so we stop it and then just reverse our lathe and it'll come back out. You don't want to take this tap out of the chuck because it's, you know, you're. When you're pulling this out, you're cleaning it up a little too, so um, best just leave it in there. Put a little bit of pressure on your uh, tailstock this way. When you get close to the end, and then when you're done cutting your threads, it'll just pull right out. Just like that. So now we got a nice thread cut in there. And then what I do, Make sure that there's no. Sometimes you get a little burr there, and you can take a deep burring tool, but it's just as easy to take a little, little piece of 600, and we'll speed our lathe up. In fact, I got my uh, gear in, and then I'm just gonna touch this off just a little bit here. Shavings coming out there, but just barely enough to take that burr down. So that's most of it. And then one extra step that I do: uh, this case is actually in pretty good shape. The guy that sent me this polished it up a little, and there's usually some crap inside there, so uh, be sure to get that out. Here's where my little threaded rod comes in. I screw this guy onto here. And it only needs to go on there so far. Chuck that guy up in the lathe. And I'll see how straight we are. A little bit of wobble there, but pretty damn good. And then I usually just grab a little bit of steel wool and I can polish this guy up. It doesn't take a lot. And you're not really, this is more for looks than anything. And we're not really taking much of anything off the exterior of the case. I got my, sorry, I got my gearbox uh, 
engaged here, so. There we go. Let's go to the bench, test her out. All right, here is our new case. Let me get this old one off here. Make sure nothing's in there. Should thread on there nicely, which it does. Nice positive stop there. So let's test our little bullet out here. Just pop that guy in there. We got some good retention there. Here we go. Pretty snazzy. So these things aren't that difficult to make, but uh, a, a really nice sharp tap and a nice sharp drill bit. And uh, you know, if you got a, a fairly good tapered case, make sure you shim this out a little bit. And there you go. Here's your uh, Hornaday overall length gauge. Um, these work great if you got customs, custom rifles, custom chamberings, or if you just um, your standard rifle. Uh, doing one of these with a fired case out of your gun will give you much better accuracy than just the standard one you'd buy out of the, sh out of the store. Uh, so there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed that. P please feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, um, and let me know if you have any questions. So till next time, be safe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.